And now we have a new entry into the repeal of Palooza. Tea Party caucus founder and ardent constitution fetishist Michelle Bachman also wants to repeal the Wall Street reform bill. Her hometown paper, the Star Tribune, obtained a letter she sent to House colleagues on Tuesday, quote, seeking co-sponsors for legislation repealing the Dodd-Frank Wall Street reform law. In the letter, Bachman wrote, it is time to repeal this job killer. Why would Congresswoman Bachman want to repeal the bill that's supposed to impose tighter rules on Wall Street and require more public disclosure? Well, it probably doesn't hurt that according to Open Secrets, among the top five industries that financed ba Bachman in 2010 were finance and securities and investment industries coming in at number three and four, respectively. And look who is in the Bachman top 15 contributors, the American Bankers Association, who donated $10,000 to her. Altogether, Congresswoman Bachman, who sits on the Financial Services Committee, has received almost $500,000 from the finance, insurance, and real estate sector in 2010. Now she's looking to repeal Wall Street reform. Bachman may be the most entertaining person whose influence over financial sector regulatory policy is compromised by all the dough she takes in from the financial sector, but there are so many, many more you have to hear to believe it. Joining us now is NBC News national investigative correspondent Michael Isagoff, who has an exclusive new report out that highlights how Wall Street helped Republicans win back the House. Michael, thanks so much for being here. Good to be with you. Okay, so you did this investigation of how hedge funds specifically right. funneled money into Republican campaigns in the midterm elections, and what did you find? Well, this is an investigation we did with the Center of Public Integrity. Uh, uh, and. Uh, it actually is one of the really big money, untold money stories of the last election. Um, the numbers you were talking about there are chicken feed to what the Wall Street hedge funds were pouring in in a variety of different ways to a lot of Republican accounts in absolutely staggering levels. What we found is about a half a dozen of these big firms put something like $10 million into Republican Party accounts. A lot of this didn't get reported during the election came because, A, it came late in the campaign, so it didn't that didn't have to be disclosed to later, went through a variety of different methods, uh, third party groups, Republican Governors Association, joint wow. fundraising committees, which are hard to trace. Yeah, those are where we're talking about those Yes, uh, and of course, the political nonprofit groups that didn't have to disclose at all. Um, we just stuck to what could be absolutely documented. And what we found is just a small number of these Very firms. small. Right. Yes, uh, SAC Capital, Steve Cohen, Household Elliott Day. Management, Paul Singer, probably one of the biggest money, most powerful money men of the Republican Party today, publicity shy, you never hear much about him, um, put millions of dollars in, and um, you could say they got their money's worth. Now, you, you had one example, which I thought was sort of particularly galling, yes. <laughs> which was a, a congressman from New Jersey who is actually going to be in charge, if I'm not mistaken, in the new Congress, of essentially chairing the committee that is going to regulate hedge funds. Right, this is probably one of the most fascinating findings. Scott Garrett, little-known Republican from New Jersey, He's going to be the new chairman of the Capital Markets Subcommittee on Financial Services, regulating Dodd-Frank financial reform, overseeing the capital markets, all of Wall Street and hedge funds. Um, Starting in about late August, when it became clear that it looked like the Republicans were going to win, this one hedge fund, Elliott Management, run by this guy, Paul Singer, rallies to boost Scott Garrett's fortunes. They hold a fundraiser for him. $195,000 in the course of a couple of weeks pour in from that one hedge fund. <laughs> Much of it to this joint fundraising committee because it's like with the NRCC, the National Republican, it, could, it can take larger than the standard limits, 2400 got about $150,000 of that. That accounted for 96% of all the money it raised. So 96% uh, of everything he raised in that one committee came from this one hedge fund. Um, and now he's the guy who's going to be overseeing the hedge fund industry so, in the House so of Representatives. Sc Scott yeah. Garrett or his campaign set up a joint fundraising committee. Yes. This joint fund yeah. committee, which has like a P.O. box somewhere, right, right. in Atlanta and or something. Post office box in Athens, right. Georgia. And then right. one, one hedge fund basically comes through. They yeah. give them one hundred ninety. 
$25,000. It's basically everything this committee raises. Yeah, and now exactly. he's going to go regulate that. Exactly. I mean, this, I mean, that is, you know, even by the usual standards, yeah, yeah. that's pretty staggering. I should point out that a lot of these guys had given to Democrats yeah. in the past, yes. in 08, and even as late as 09, they didn't like Dodd-Frank, they didn't like some of the tax proposals, they didn't like General Obama's uh, uh, economic policies, and they really, you know, moved big time to the Republicans, and that accounts for these kind of numbers. Michael Isikoff, National Investigative Correspondent for NBC News, really Thank appreciate you. it. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Good to be with you.